Lawyers of Reddit, what's the stupidest case you've been asked to take on? And did you? I am a personal injury lawyer in the UK. I took a call from a potential client that had fallen down the stairs in her own home. She had tripped over her own cat. She told me that she wanted to sue her local authority as her home was owned by the council and she was not allowed to keep pets as part of her lease. She claimed that when the house was inspected she was not told to get rid of the cat. It was there for the council's fault that she fell down the stairs. We didn't take the case on. Edit, formatting and some tidying up. Not really stupid but unbelievable. My friend at work. His girlfriend filed for divorce a few weeks ago. That's right. They aren't married and common law doesn't apply in WA state. They live together for 5 years. She has a job. She isn't on the mortgage. And she left him a few months ago. There are no kids involved. They were never engaged. In the divorce she wants him to leave his house and she wants to move back in. She wants him to pay her 2800 a month for some reason. I referred him to my divorce attorney and now that attorney is probably going to represent him. The chick is nuts. She has already tried to get a restraining order against him that was dismissed. I dealt with a guy once who wanted me to take on his road traffic accident pie claim. He had written a poem. In Yoruba. About the accident. He refused to tell me anything about his case until he's read the whole thing. In Yoruba. Among other problems. I can't speak any ducking Yoruba. As in. Not one word. As in. That day was the first time I had ever heard of the Yoruba language. I'm not even from a part of the world where I might readily be mistaken for someone who speaks Yoruba. It's a West African language. And I am really. Really obviously not from a West African background. I try to explain this to the guy who becomes very agitated and insists that he must read out his poem in Yoruba. I give up and tell him to get on with it so we can talk about his claim. He does. It takes him nearly 20 minutes to finish. Anyway. After he's done. He finishes and sits back with a big smile and says that he's certain I'll take his case on now. I begin to ask him some questions about his case. But he refuses to answer. He says that this poem, in Yoruba, is everything I need to know about his case. Basically. I tell him to duck off and stop wasting my time. He does. But not before standing around outside my office for an hour or so. Reading out his poem. To no one in particular. Over and over again. In Yoruba. Edit. Thanks for the golds. Strangers. Client wanted to sue because there were no strawberries in her fruit salad which she bought from a supermarket. Thankfully a secretary was able to screen the call. She asked if the package said it had strawberries. And the response was. No. But I thought it would have. I don't know how these people manage to make it through life. Without going into too many details, had a guy that wanted to bring a class action against the company that made his underwear. Because he was convinced his underwear was the reason he had a crooked big dick. He assured us that as soon as the jury saw his big dick, they'd side with him. No. We didn't take it. A lady once called asking us to sue her neighbors. They were using voodoo on her. Fortunately. She had psychic powers and thus knew what they were doing. I respectfully declined. I was working in a law firm and got a call from reception advising that someone had arrived needing some intellectual property advice. I arrived at reception to find a clearly disturbed woman with a persistent facial twitch and a small wheeled suitcase. I took her to a conference room to discuss. Making sure I kept a good line of sight to reception. She put the suitcase on the table and opened it to reveal a stack of thousands of handwritten pages and one half of a pair of scissors, so I guess a scissor? She explained that she had written a manuscript about how the city council gave her schizophrenia and hepatitis. Eileen stole her pets and that it was all part of a bigger conspiracy involving the army and the Illuminati. She was worried that our local newspaper was going to steal her thoughts and publish her manuscript without her consent. And wanted to register the copyright in her manuscript. We then had a perfectly rational and reasonable discussion about copyright laws. 
I explained that in our jurisdiction she didn't need to register it and that she had rights as an author automatically on creation of the work. I told her the most useful thing she could do is ensure she had evidence of her creative work. And that she should send a digital copy to herself and a friend. And also leave a copy with a friend. That way if it was published without her consent she could prove it was her work. We spoke for nearly an hour. She thanked me and then left. She got free legal advice. And I didn't get stabbed with a scissor. I hope she found the help she needs. Edit, assumed this would get buried. I was a junior and just tried to treat the client with respect and empathy. Scissor gave me pause. But never felt in danger. Was relieved she had a real legal question and we focused on that rather than her delusions. And in that sense it wasn't a stupid case. I will say this, as a society. We don't do enough to look after our most vulnerable people including those with serious mental health issues. Edit 2. Thanks for my first gold. Kind stranger. My father is a patent attorney. And when I was around 14 he told me about a guy who wanted to patent the iPhone 3 because aliens had given him the design for it. My father told him that if the aliens originally designed then they were the ones that had to patent it. Not him. A guy found a rock in the middle of Melbourne CBD that he believed came from an underground volcano therefore he discovered the volcano and he owned the volcano and that the Melbourne City Council and indeed the Victorian government should pay him rent to live on top of his underground volcano. No no I did not take on the case. I run a consumer advocacy firm. I had a client come in and tell me that he bought a product. And the company refused to honor the warranty after the product broke. I asked for details. And he just started screaming in my face asking if I was going to take his money or not. I decided then that I wasn't taking him on as a client. But I wanted to know what was going on. I convinced him to tell me what happened. Turns out he bought a computer back in the 1990s. It had just recently died. But not because it was old and just stopped working. It was slow. So he picked it up and threw it out a two-story window. And then he wanted to sue the manufacturer for breaking warranty. Edit, well there goes my inbox. <laughs> Lawyer for 12 years. Client was charged with stealing a mobile toilet. After we won he told me he still owns it. The ducker has the thing in his backyard because he was lazy as duck, his office was nearby. Forced him to deliver it back at night, Jesus, still offended that he lied to me me the whole time. My dad is an in-house lawyer for a major American insurance company. He once spent an entire year trying to help deny insurance benefits for a painter who had stepped off his ladder onto a cat. Fallen down the stairs and become paralyzed. The insurance company was arguing that a cat was a commonly expected occupational hazard for a painter and that he was negligent in not checking for cats before stepping down. A whole year of his life. Over whether a cat is a known occupational hazard of house painting. I never did much criminal defense. But a man. Who we'll call Dennis. Came into my office with a driving while intoxicated charge and a aggravated unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle charge, both misdemeanors. Dennis swore up. Down. And sideways that one. He does not drink and was not intoxicated. Two. He never drove the vehicle. And three, that he has a valid driver's license. I give Dennis the names of some local criminal defense and DWI attorneys and suggest he try them out. Dennis refuses. Saying I'm the lawyer he wants, in hindsight. I should have realized that he probably had already gone to these other attorneys and only came to me after they refused to take his case. I charge the guy $200 for an intake and record review fee and contact the local court. Police station and district attorney's office for information and paperwork. I find out that not only did this guy blow a .18 on the breathalyzer, but the cops did a blood test on him after he kept insisting he wasn't drunk. The blood test came back with a .2 to back. As for driving, the separate squad cars witnessed Dennis's vehicle run over a mailbox and drive off. He was followed and pulled over on the block. Per the police report, Dennis was the only person in the car and was in the driver's seat with a seat belt on. Oh. 
and I tracked down his license through the DMV and it had expired 3 years ago and was suspended for 2 years prior to that. I called Dennis back into my office and told him he did not have a case that should be taken to trial. Dennis admitted that he probably had been drunk. But he wasn't aware he had been drinking. His son must have put fireball whiskey in his green tea and he didn't realize there was whiskey in his green tea because he was eating red hot cinnamon candies and had a cold stuffy nose. Anyways. Dennis retains me. But only after I put a clause in his engagement agreement stating I explained his low chance at trial and he understood there was no guarantee of a win. I take the case to trial and. Of course. We lose. I was hoping to convince Dennis to take one of the plea offers given to us in advance. But absolutely not. Dennis was sure the judge would understand. Dennis wanted a bench trial. Not a jury trial. I made him sign another document later on that said he understood the difference between a bench and jury trial and he was opting for the bench trial, and he would be found not guilty and everyone would move on. He was sorely disappointed. But only got probation after trial. I think the judge was taking pity on me more than Dennis. Dennis later sued me for his retainer because I didn't adequately defend him. As proof of my inadequate representation. He offered the judge's verdict rendering him guilty. The case was thrown out quickly. Woman wanted me to sue McDonald's because their employees beat up her son. Who was trying to rob the place. I did insurance defense for a long time including insurance fraud investigations for insurance companies. You wouldn't believe how many people take a video inventory of their house only to have it mysteriously burn down the next day. You really can't fix stupid. I'm a prosecutor. So I don't get hired to represent anyone. I work for the government, but I do have discretion over how the prosecution progresses, that is, deciding to proceed. Deciding what to offer in the event of a plea bargain. Deciding to withdraw the charges. Etc. I had a case a few months ago where a man was charged with shoplifting. Turned out he was 70 years old. Had absolutely no criminal record. And had shoplifted a sandwich which he ate politely in the store. He honestly thought he had paid for it. I was so angry that he was ever charged in the first place. When I saw him in court. He was absolutely terrified. I withdrew the charges and wished him well. I have no idea how it progressed that far. Let me preface this. I had heard about the guy I'm going to mention below before I had actually met him. I thought this was an urban legend. Until he came into my office one day. A guy in his late 50s early 60s comes into the lobby area of my office and starts a commotion that freaks out the receptionist. I was the closest attorney to the lobby so I go out and talk to the guy. He was clearly mentally disturbed and presented the following story. Someone had implanted a device in his brain that was controlling his behavior. He believed it was being controlled by Baskin Robbins and a former mayor of Detroit. He believed they were forcing him to do random things like going to bars to drink. Taking the wrong turn when driving. Forcing him to retire from his job. And a lot of very other intricate things. After asking him if he had seen any doctors regarding the implant he got really upset and said that he thought the doctors were in on it as well. After telling him I couldn't help him and suggesting that he find some new doctors. He asked me if I knew any lawyers who specialized in his kind of case. I often wonder if the lawyer I referred him to was able to help him. I had a client come in saying that he needed to sue Stu for robbing all his checks. When I asked him if Stu had a last name. He said no. When I asked him if he knew any Stu. He said no. When I asked him what proof he had that Stu was robbing him. He showed me all of his pay stubs. There were clear. Monthly deductions by Stu. As soon as I saw it. I knew. I asked do you have children? He said yes. I then told him your Stu is the Stu. The support collection unit. They take money out of your check to pay for your child. He left the office insisting that we needed to find Stu. I'm in immigration. So most of my stupid cases involve people trying to con the system or forgot to tell us material information. One lady stood out. Though. She was referred to us as a pro bono case. 
She was filing for asylum based on the fact that she's a Chinese national and she's also a devout Christian. If she was sent back, she would be persecuted based on religious reasons. So nothing weird up to this point. She provided me with statements about how she and her family were harassed by the local police and how certain members of her congregation were arrested. So I'm looking at the statements and the names and places sound familiar. Sure enough. A quick googling showed this was one of the board stories. Essentially what happens is there are people on the internet that sells these packages of fake documents and stories for a successful asylum case. From what I've heard. It usually is a real case that was successful. And someone got a hold of the supporting documents and started mass producing them and selling them. I'm guessing you were supposed to change the names from the original. But this lady didn't. Another red flag was the fact that in her supporting documents. The witnesses kept referring to her in the mail form. At first I thought the English translation had typos. But yeah same thing in the original Chinese ones. I always thought it was more of an urban legend amongst immigration lawyers. Needless to say. I did not take her case. When I was a federal prosecutor. An CIS agent wanted me to prosecute federally someone living near the base for flying the US. Flag the wrong way. I didn't. He was miffed. I have a friend who's a lawyer. One time. He worked a custody battle for a man following his divorce. The primary argument was that his ex-wife was a massive itch and would negatively impact the development of the children. The evidence consisted of statements from co-workers. Facebook arguments. And a list of her complaints she filed for frivolous things. He said it was a legitimate case. But everything about it was so petty and stupid. The guy won. A lady in prison in my state tried to sue the State Department of Corrections for holding her against her will. A lawyer wouldn't touch it. Probably too late here but I was a civil rights investigator. We had one guy complain that he was fired from his factory job because of his race. He was black. Owner of the factory said it was because the guy was smoking crack on his lunch break. Turns out he was smoking crack on his lunch break but so were a few of his white co-workers and they were not fired. The owner agreed to pay the guy 6 months of back pay and give him a neutral reference. When I was in law school I did the criminal defense clinic where we help a public defender. I say help because they just give you small cases to do by yourself. I had a guy accused of shoplifting a yellow fubu shirt. Guess what he wore to the trial? A GD yellow fubu shirt. I asked the prosecutor to re-offer the plea deal. She did. And I convinced the guy to take community service and probation, if I remember correctly. Our public defender system is tragically overworked and underfunded.